Um, hi, guys. Wait, let me close. Uh, um, so if you don't know, I'm Daniel, and that's Shaq Sham. Yeah. Um, so this week we're going to learn um, image processing and computer vision. And so you probably heard of convolutional neural networks, and so we're going to teach you some of the theory behind convolutional neural networks and how they actually work. Um, but first, right, first we need to know some other stuff. Okay, so remember, so remember from last time, we told you the cost function was um, y hat minus y, right, square it and harder, right? If you remember this, this was the cost function. So what this is trying to say is that the cost function, this is the prediction, y hat is the prediction, and y is your true, right, your true y. And what this is trying to say is if the difference between them is big, you want to penalize it even bigger. That's why you have a square. You're trying to penalize the difference between them even bigger. And so this is a quadratic function, right? And to square, um, we halve it because if you differentiate it, remember, if we bring the two down, this cancels, so it looks more nice. That's why we put the half. Anyways, this is the cost function for continuous variables, right? If y was 10, uh, if y hat was 10, right, and y was um, 2, right, then you just minus, right? But this is only for continuous variables. So now we are going to do, remember, image classification is, um, has classes, right? We want to classify if an image is a dog or a cat, right? So a dog can be 1 and a cat can be 0. But we can't just use this formula because this formula is for continuous variables. This is like 10 and 8 or like 120 or whatever, right? So instead, we need to devise a new method to compute a cost, right? But for binary variables, right? Or, or for like classes, like um, a digit, one, digit 0, digit 1, digit 2, digit 3, all the way to digit 10, right? All of these are classes. We need to find a way to compute the cost in relation to this. Not, not continuous variables, but discrete, right? This is discrete. There's no numbers between 0 and 1. It's just 0 and 1. And the cost function we are going to make it's a bit different. You probably saw me last time, but I computed the accuracy of a prediction. And the accuracy of a prediction was if y hat, which is, oh, no, I'll just cut that. The accuracy of a prediction is if y hat, right, was equal, equal to y. Right? This equal, equal sign, like, don't use this in math, because no such thing. But anyways, this equal, equal signs in programming means if does 1 equal, equal to 2? No, so it's 0. Right? Does 1 equal equal to 1? Yes, so it equals 1. Right? So this is the, that's what the equal equal operator does. In maths, right, the, the, technical, the technical method to do this is something called the indicator function. If you did statistics, you probably heard of this, but the indicator function, right, it's just i. It does, don't, put, don't put the two lines, I just liked it. Um, the two, um, what it does is if y hat, right, is like this, right? If they are equal, then it'll output 1 or 0, right? If they're not equal, it'll output 0, okay? So pr pretend, right, the indicator of dog and cat, right, they're not the same, so it'll be 0, right? The indicator of cat and cat, right, will be 1, okay? So this is the indicator function. This is in math terms. So why did I, why did I say, like, why do we need to know this, right? The point is, now we can compute the cost. Right, so the total accuracy, right, the total accuracy is equal to the indicator function of your prediction, right, is equal to y, right, and you add it all together, the sum, right, there's only ones and zeros, so you add it all together, and this is divided by how many variables there are, or how many, what's the size of y hat, and that is divided by n, and this will be a number between 0 and 1. Right, this is the how much percent accuracy your prediction is. So, so this is how we compute the accuracy of a binary, uh, like a discrete variable. Right, this is not continuous. This is for discrete variables. However, there is one more thing we need to consider. So, pretend our y's, right, the target variable, which is y, right, the target variable looks like this: dog, cat, dog, cat. Right, we do this. But we can't put this in a machine learning algorithm, right? Because remember, this has to be numbers. 
So we have to change these variables into categories, right? So pretend let's say that dog was one and cat was zero. So what we do is we transform it into one, zero, one, zero. And then we can make a model on this, right? However, there is an issue with this model. Because does that mean dog is more important than cat, right? Does the cat, because cat is zero, does that mean dog is more like, you know, the one is larger than zero? So it kind of means dog is more important. We could have like done this, right? We could have just made zero and one. Then it would just be um, one, zero, zero, one, right? We could do that. But this is not the same as the other matrix. So how, what do we do to, like, how do we, how do we not have this problem, right? These zeros and ones don't really mean anything, but we assign meaning to them. But if we put it into a model, the model thinks cat is larger than dog, right? This is obviously not true. Cat is not larger than dog, right? So how do we solve this issue, right? We can use indicator functions. Let's say that the first column is the indicator that this, this thing is equal to dog. Right, so what does the matrix look like? Is the first one equal to dog? Yes. Second one, zero. Yes, zero. And then the second column is, the second column is indicator of y is equal to cat. Right? So, zero, one, zero, one. And then we combine them together. And this is your new y variables, right? It has two columns. The indicator with respect to each of these categories. And in fact, this is called dummification. Right? This, this process is called dummifying the variables. So we use indicator functions to create this new Y. Right? It's, it's a large matrix which looks like 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. Right? And this is your new Y. So this is called dummification. Okay? So this is needed to classify between dog and cat for some algorithms. You'll see later on why we need to do this. Okay, so If you extend the concept, pretend that we have right, numbers. We want to classify numbers. 1, 2, and 3. Right? To use the indicator function, it will just be indicator y1, right? It will just be 1, 0, 0, and then the 2, so 0, 1, 0, and then the 3, 0, 0, 1. And we just add them all together, right? We put it into a column. Delete all of this part. And then there, that's your new y. Right? It's a larger matrix. But this is necessary. Otherwise, the algorithm, like the algorithm, now knows that it's not saying that like three is greater than two is greater than one. Obviously, this is true, but it does not mean for all categories it's like that, right? Pretend three was person, and then rock, right, and paper, or something like this, right? Obviously, that's not right. You can't just say a uh, person is greater than rock is greater than paper, but that's what it means. Um, so this dummification is very important. Uh, this is also called one block coding. Ah, uh, yes, correct. For those who are it. <coughs> yeah. The, the the more the other the other way to say it is called one one hot encoding. Or yeah. So it's, I think in math they just call it dummification. I think. I'm not sure, but. Uh. Okay. So next thing. Ten more minutes. Where is it? Oh yes, convolutions, convolutions. Yeah. Fun stuff. Okay, so pretend I have an image, right? Pretend this image is the whole classroom. How do we classify? How do we, okay, pretend the chair, right? This chair was, was the image, right? You look at this chair. How do we know that this is the chair, right? If you, give, if you give the whole image of this whole classroom, how do we know that this is a chair, right? There are three methods you can do this. The first method is trying to work out the features of this chair. Right? So pretend, okay, so if you look at the chair, what is the feature? Well, if, if I say this is the image, right, the left side is empty, right, so the left, so if I draw the chair, oh, uh, just do, okay, just pretend this is the chair, horrible drawing or whatever, right, if, you, if this was the image, what we do is we can do features, right, we can cut the image in half and work out the density of the image this way, right? So maybe the density, like this is all filled in, right? The image is filled in. And then we cut it in half. So what is the density over here? So maybe like 10%, I don't know, just guess, right? And then the other side is also 10%. This is how much the image is filled, right? And then you can do other slices, right? Instead of cutting it vertically, you can cut it this way, right? The top is 0%. 
and then the other, well, yeah, numbers, right? So this is how you can do it. This is called feature extraction, or feature engineering, if you like to call it. Right? And this, once you have an image, right, each object will have different ratios, right? You don't have to do like slicing this way or that way. You can slice strangely. You can also get just the middle part, right? Or you can slice diagonally and get the density. Or you can work at how many holes there are in the image. Right? This is this is one way that people used to do it, right? Um, the accuracy is not that bad, but this is the old way, right? So the first method is called feature engineering, right? We're going to make features, right? And the features are like left density, right density, top density, blah, blah, blah. Like you can make as many as you like. Okay, this is the first method. The second method people try, actually there's one, actually it's, this method now is like before it. But the second method is dumbification or flattening, right? And what we do is pretend we have, okay, this stupid chair example, whatever, right? The chair example, right? We can't input this inside the system, right? We can't just put this image inside the machine learning model. The machine learning model, remember, the cost function was y hat minus y, right? Square and half. But what does this mean, right? Remember, y is going to be chair. Right? If you do dumbification, it will just be 1 or 0, right? But um, what is this y hat? We have to minus it, right? So obviously this will be the prediction, right? 1 or 0. But the point is, remember, we have to update the parameters, right? This is the gradient descent algorithm, remember? The gradient descent algorithm, right? And remember, what does the parameters do? For linear regression, it is x of theta, right? But what does this mean? Before, x was just a row. Right? Now the image is not a row anymore. It is a gigantic, big, fat matrix. Right? How do we change this into a row? What we do is we slice it. Right? You slice it all up, and then you get the first slice, you leave it there. You get the second slice, and you put it over here. And you get the third slice, and you put it over here. And so on. Right? You have this gigantic, long row of um, this image. And this is called flattening, or cutting, whatever you like to call it. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to squish the image into one row and then we can put it into the algorithm. That should work fine. It just means there's lots of colors, right? So remember, if you squish it up, this is fine. Because if you have another image, if you have a person inside it, the squishing ratio will be different. Uh, also, I forgot to tell you, to put it into the algorithm, these would just be numbers, right? If there was, if there was a like, edge over here, it would just be one. This would just all be zeros, right? 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and this is just 1, 1, 1, right? It will look like this, and so on, right? And if you squish it up into one line, and then you can put it into the algorithm, and then it should be fine. However, that's the second method, right? Flattening. The second method is called flattening. Oh. So the second method is called flattening. However, there's one more method, right? Kind of, they're not really, it's not really modern, but I would say it's modern. It's probably like 10-ish years old, I think. The, the third method is called convolutions. So what is convolutions? Or, like, remember, if you heard of convolutional neural networks, that's just using the concept of convolutions. You can apply convolutions to other networks. Like you can use random forests and perform convolutions. So what is convolutions, right? You probably heard like it's cool or stuff. Anyways. That same thing, pretend we have a person inside, right? Remember, the issue with flattening is that the columns, there's too many, right? These, these blank columns, they're just zeros, right? They're not useful. And remember, feature engineering, what does feature engineering do? We're trying to find the density on the left, the right, and some, like other features. We make it up ourselves. And what convolution does is it uses both methods and combines them together, right? But you don't need to make your features yourself. It automatically makes the features by itself, and, and then it flattens it. So what is the convolution? Right? Pretend we have an image. If you're a human, right, what you do is you look at the image, but you also scan across the image. Right? You don't just look, like you see the person, okay, but then you're probably looking at the person's eyes or something, or looking at the sky, right? So what you do in a convolution is you get this part. You subset some part of the image, right, like pretend just this part. And we move it across, okay, so this part will be called the kernel. And this kernel, what we do is we shift it across. 
So I'll show you what I mean. Remember, this kernel inside is just ones and zeros, remember? Because um, the image. So, okay, we shift it across. We shift it to here. And what we do is we apply, we apply a summation formula or a matrix multiplication. So what we do literally is whatever you see here, right, just in this little box, right, you see the person's head on top, right, just the head. What you do is you get the original part of the matrix and you times it together and you get some number. So this number may be like um, three, right? And then you shift the kernel again. You shift it across. Right, you shift the kernel again and you times it. Remember the old number was three, maybe this is like zero or 0 0.1 because there's only a tiny little thing. Right, so why do we do this, right? What, what's this whole shifting business? What we have done is we have, we have computed a region of area right, that is correlated with the other regions. So this is, this is correlation making, right? We are trying to get one picture, one area of the picture and correlate it with every single other area. And the resulting, the resulting row will just be some, some row of numbers, right? The number of, row, um, of columns will be smaller than what we did with flattening, okay? And this is a method, this is called convolutions. We're trying to apply, we're trying to subset a tiny image inside the image we shift it across multiple areas, right? Once we shift it over here, it's the end, we go down. Right, and then we shift again, and then we go down. So we're trying to look at the image in tiny segments, and we're trying to compute the total sum of what we see in one segment. And this is called convolutions. And the, the mathematical formula for doing this, don't worry, you don't need to derive or whatever, we're not going to derive it, um, is, so pretend, remember, I told you that we have a sub, sub, subset of an image, right? This, this, the, like the window size, or whatever you like to call it. I'm going to call this subset S, right? And the exchange matrix, right? In, if you remember from before, the identity matrix was all ones, right, on the row, uh, on the diagonal, and all zeros, right? Zero, 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 right? This is the identity matrix. The exchange matrix is the reversal of the identity matrix, and it looks like this. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, right, all 1s, 0 is this way. But right? it's a total, it's the reflection of an identity matrix. And what this exchange matrix does is we want to reverse the, um, reverse some subset of the image, right? Pretend, remember this was a subset of the image. All we do is we apply, we times the exchange matrix onto the subset of the image, and then we times the exchange matrix. And with this, we times it, right? We, okay, this is, so remember, this is this, this matrix times the subset. Remember the subset is just zeros and ones. And then what we do is we do, we apply a, um, a element-wise multiplication. Remember this symbol from before? This means element-wise multiplication. And what this means, if you have one, 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 right, you do element multiplication, two, 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 Right, it's just 1 times 2, which is 2. 1 times 2, 2, 1 times 2. So it's just literally matching up the elements. And that's your element multiplication. Right? But what do we multiply by? We multiply by the shifting, right? The image we see behind. So the image subset. Oh, I'm not going to. Um, I just write image. Right? And this, remember, we sum it up. So this is the convolution formula for um, images. And remember, the image itself will shift, right? This is the behind image we see. So remember, this is the kernel, or the subset, we're going to call this S, right? Remember, this kernel shifts across, and we sum it up using this formula, right? And the image itself is the one behind it, right? So the kernel shifts over, and the image is behind it. And with this, we have some number, like 10 or something. And we put it into a new matrix. And if you realize what the convolutions does, is if you have like some image of a chair, the resulting matrix will be smaller than the chair. Right? So if you have, if you have a like this size of image, right, it will shrink it down to this size. And so on. Right? It depends on how many convolutions you do. But it will keep shrinking the image down into the most important features using correlation. Right? And this is the formula we will use. Anyway, uh, just on that. Yeah. Uh, does anyone know how many terms will be in the summation? Um, based on like it's a three-unit question. 
from pros and cons. Um, if you have a total image, and let's say, take this chair for example, I can't draw. Um, so we have an m by m image, say it's a square image, and the kernel, which is also called the receptive layer, is m by n. Like how many if how many times do we have to convolve? As in how many times do we have to shift it across the image, right? Yeah, like so here, 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 and then go down one pixel. Does anyone? Because remember, we can't do this forever, right? We have to have a limiting factor. We have, like within the loop when you like shift across and you sum it all together. You have to have some have to have a condition point. which stops the shifting. Illusion, yeah. Otherwise, we'll just go back to the front and keep going, or go to like null and it just, you know. It will shift and keep going to nothingness. So does anyone know the, the number of shifts in total? If we have an m by m image and an m by n code. No, yes, no. Is that m minus n times m minus n? Uh, close. Uh, basically, yeah, you're almost right, but you have to remember to include this last, so it's, um, m minus n plus 1 squared because that's the number of ways you can move in this direction and the same applies for this direction as well and then you just multiply them which is the same number so you square it and that's what your sum goes to yeah so you start from the first one and then you go up to here yeah okay <laughs> yeah just that just the side oh actually that's important <laughs> when you code it, it's important, but for theory, like, you can just it. Okay, anyways, so check, uh, let me change this. Um, yeah, just start focus on the, uh, focus the camera on the... Uh, I have to move it back. Yeah. So what if you have to say this, like, a camera's called, like, sliding, like, sliding, sliding? Yeah. Oh, no, no, it's always just one, um, you shift it by one pixel, every time. What if it's multiple pixels? Multiple Oh, sorry, then sorry. Also not, um, then you have less convolution, obviously, right? Yeah. What? So What's more Apple Pixel? Oh, wait, actually. As, um, informative as the original method. So if you like skip, say you skip like five pixels, yeah. then you're missing a lot of important information in that area, yeah. and that will like screw up your um, hmm. estimate. What was the question? Like if, um, instead of convolving pixel by pixel, if you skip pixels. Yeah, you can do that if you want. You can do that, but it's not like. Oh, remember, you can choose your kernel size. Right. Yes. So if you make it smaller, like you always you move one pixel, but you can change the size of the yeah. receptive layer. Also. Yeah, yeah. Here we have a question. Yeah. Uh, what was the difference between the image and S? Oh, the oh, oh yes. Okay, sorry. Uh, uh, so the image, right? Okay, the formula which I showed you was the sum of the image, right? Um, element multiplication times the exchange matrix times the subset times this, right? And the sum up, right? This image, are you talking about this time? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, what this means is if I, if, this is the real image, right? The chair. Yeah. Right? This is not the same as that image. What I meant was that, remember, S is a subset of an image, right? This subset. Uh -huh. We want to move this subset this way, right? Put it over here, put it over here. And the image is just the behind of this subset. Whatever is behind the subset, right? So if, if the subset, if I shift the image across and the subset is over here, right, the image, this, this term image, is whatever is behind this, whatever you look at. No, yes? What's the subset? The subset is the blue part, right? It's the original part that we selected at the front. Right? This is not the same. So, what I mean, okay, I'll show you again. I have an image, right? Let's say that it just looks like this. Oh, uh, actually, no. I'll do... Okay? What we do is the subset will be here. Right? So I put the subset as this part, the first part. Right? The circle. We shift the circle across. Right? This, just this thing, we shift it across. Right? So what is the image now? This term image will be a triangle. Right? And we do what we do is we times it by the circle. Right, the original thing. And then we shift it across again. And what would the image be now? It would just be a circle. And so on, right? And then the next one will be a square. So what we do is we keep this first part stationary. And then we shift it across to get some sum. Remember. And then after that, remember the next, the next 
um, subset will be the next part of the image, right? Which is the triangle. So then it will change. And then so on, right? You'll have to do this six times. So six, yeah. Yes? Yeah, okay. So each, so with the circle, you times it six times, and then you move on to the triangle. So then, yes, triangle, okay. and then you times it all again. So it'll be six times six, 36 times. Yeah? Yeah, which is the square, as you see from Shakshan's formula, the square thing. Okay, um, now we're going to do programming. Okay, so today we're going to do digit classification with um, random forest. So if you're working on kernels, you can just bigger, bigger, bigger. create a new kernel and... Um, yes, I can see now. Yep. Oh wait, maybe that's too big. Yeah. A bit smaller. Yeah. One more. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, so, so if you're working on kernels, you can um, just go to kernel, create a new kernel, new notebook. And from competitions, make sure you select MNIST. So the digit recognizer, if you select that, you should end up with a um, new kernel here, and you should have an input files header at the top, which contains our train.csv, which we'll be using. So, and those of you on Jupyter Notebook, um, just a reminder on how to access it, terminal will be blocked here, but just type in Jupyter Notebook in your directory, and then a web page should open. And you can also get the data set from Campbell's data set mm -hmm. uh, database. So does everyone have that? No. Where's the um, data from Campbell? Um, where are you on? Oh, no, you have Anacon. You have Jupyter Notebook. Yeah. Right? Um, um, you can get it from. No, no, dude, only use Campbell. Wait, you already have. You already. So does every. Oh, so wait, they can just import it. Right? Yeah. yeah. Do the people who don't have. So okay, this is on Kaggle. So not like if you don't have Kaggle, do you have Python installed with Anaconda? Yes, no. Yes. Okay. Um. Uh, okay. If you have Anaconda installed, have you opened Jupyter Notebooks? Okay. Let me. Just be. Just yeah. Uh, I think. Actually, let me just check. Uh. No, no, no. Give me a second. Right, Google's your favorite friend. Just search it all off. Where is it? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, it works. Oh, yeah, it works. Yep, it works. Okay. Oh, wait, what? Digits. Oh, oops. Oh. Okay. Right, so if you have Anaconda and Blind Store, you don't need to download anything. It's already inside the system. And all you need to do is type sklearn.datasets import load digits as digit. So just copy paste. Right? Remember, your x variable is all your, all your um, features, all your columns, which is dot images. And your target variable is 1 and 0, 9, like, you know, yeah. So just type x and 0. Just, oh, yeah, the first image. Right, the first image will be this random, this is the image, right? This, it's not 0 and 1 now, because these numbers represent colors, right? Oh, we'll get into that, it's just a pixel value. Yeah, yeah. All right, and do y0. These are your labels. Right, so that's the first image the first is the 0. Image is a zero. Oh wait, maybe you should show it. Okay. So, do so yeah, these are all the labels. Um, oh no, no, I mean the first image. Pot. Oh yeah, we'll do that. Like when everyone has the data. Oh, do you have the data? No. Can everyone get the data? Yeah. Would the 
um, this tent on Kaggle, um, it's asking for a SMS verification. Oh, just say no. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about it. Uh, can you scroll all the way back up? Oh yeah, those are the... Yeah, just import all these libraries which we'll use. And when everyone has the data, we'll get started. So, did you get it? This is just if you're using Jupyter Notebook. If you're on Kaggle like I am, don't copy this part. Did it not? Just copy these two. And these are the pixel values. So like, zero, um, zero, one. So there's 784 of these. And if you want to plot one, so let's say we want to plot this five here. So we'll call that example. Um, data dot this is our data set. So we're going to reference the. We want to print this, right? We want to print the eight here. So we're going to reference the tenth row, and we're going to select every column from. This. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So we're going to reference every column from one onwards. So that's from here onwards, from zero to seven eighty four. We're going to ignore the first, the zero column because we don't need that. That's just the label. Okay. So now we have our pixel values for the tenth entry, which is the digit eight. So now let's print this just to visualize it. Um, so we have to reshape it. And as you can see, that's the digit 8, we just printed that. So just to recap what we did, we have a row of pixels, just one row, 1 by 784 row, which represents this um, number 8. We reshaped it, we selected it firstly, the tenth row, and all columns from one onwards. We shaped it into a 28 by 28 matrix so that we can show it. And then we plotted it using matplotlib. So did everyone get that? So can this is go up? Yeah, go for it. If you don't get anything, you can just stop. So as you can see, this means we're trying to get the data set that's already flattened and we're trying to make it into an image, which is the opposite of what we taught you, which is yeah. getting an image and we want to flatten it. If you have this one which is not flattened, then you can... Oh yeah, we should show that. You don't have to reshape it, you can just do the block. Um, yeah, but you have to reshape yes. oh. it. Wait, what? No, this is a graphic. That's That's the first one, which is a Oh, maybe it should be 10, maybe it's the No, it's probably just one Yeah. I can't even tell what that is. <laughs> anyway, if you're using the Psycho Learned one, you can just reference it like that. <laughs> PLT.im show x, the tenth image, which is um, the two brackets, ten. Right? It looks like that. Okay, so everyone should have one, some image. Either the... Either the... It doesn't have to be... Either the A, if you follow exactly what I've done, or... Um, this is zero. zero. Yeah, probably yes. zero. That's what's like a learns image. Yeah. So it's different data sets. Can you just go up for like yeah, five sure. seconds? Um, just that. Yeah. Just that. Yep. Yeah. Yes. That's what I need. This one. Zero. Zero. Wait. This one. Yeah. On this. I think you might have to <laughs> Still too small. Yeah, <laughs> Oh, the as 
type, um, u int means unassigned integer, eight length, the length of eight. That's all I mean. You don't have to do u int eight, you can just do int if you want. As long as it's an integer, because that's what we're going to do. Yep. Reshape 28, 28 means you're trying to get the row, and we're trying to make it into a 28 by 28. Because remember our array, I mean, yeah, our array is just a 1 by 784 image. You can't display that because it'll just look like some straight line with like that. So we reshape it 28 by 28. Yeah, did everyone get that? Did, you get, did it plot? Yep. Okay, good. So. Um, I'll just leave that there, yeah. print that there. Yeah. Yeah. Just interpret that as a, as a, yeah. Like zero or a, yeah. Okay, so now, we all, yeah. just, 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 Okay, so we're just going to split this data into independent and dependent variable matrices. So we're going to call x our uh, matrix of independent variables. So I'll quickly select that. So now what do we want for x? We want... I'll just the top. We'll just show them how to get it. So we want all of these. Everything except for the labels. So we want every single row. And we want to select the columns from one onward. That's very cryptic. And now we want our matrix, our vector of labels. So we want this one into Y, this whole column. Do you understand the notation? So what this means is every we want every single row. And in terms of columns, we want all columns from one onwards. So we want everything from here and to the right for our X matrix. And for our y, what we want is everything, every single row and just the first column. So, zero. And now let's just print to make sure we got that right. And as you can see, oh wait, what? Oh. And as you can see, that's our matrix of independent variables. It's the same as previously, except we have the labels cut out. And if we do the same with y, we'll have our labels of um, what we're trying to predict. So if, if everyone has that, did everyone get this, X and Y? Okay, so now we have two matrices, independent and dependent variables. So, yeah, we'll quickly split this. Um, so now we're going to split this data. Just predict. It's just one. So we're going to take it. Oh, uh, we did this earlier, if you guys remember. Frame, set, split. So this is to split the data set, like the original data set, into testing and training. Yeah. And we're going to use our X and Y, our matrices which we created here, independent and dependent. And we are going to um, set our test size, I think. Yeah. 0 0.2. So what this means is we want an 80 to 20% ratio of our testing data set and training data set. So if everyone has that, we're basically splitting our X and Ys into randomly selected data, 80% consisting of the training set and 20% to test. We don't want to make this number too high because then we'll be overfeeding. Okay, so now I'll just quickly create an instance of the random forest classifier. Also, I think last time someone asked us why you split the data into 20 and 80 percent. Oh yeah. The point is, if you don't split the data and we train the model on just all of the data, what happens if we get a new data set? We can't just predict. So what the splitting does is we try to subset some part of the um, some some part of the data that we just train on, and then we can test the model to see if the like the images we didn't see are in fact like shows that the model's good or bad. That's why we have to split it. So now we're going to create a random forest classifier with a hundred um, uh, trees. That's basically what it means. We're creating a hundred trees. And now we're going to fit our data by calling the fit um, method on our um, train. 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 Uh, 
it's going to take a while because it's processing all that, creating the hundred trees which we assigned here. Uh, no, it's not done. Anyway, it'll take like a like a thirty second. Just do it. Wait, just try it. Just oh, okay, there, it's done. Stop. And now we're going to check you to the <coughs> We're going to predict this on our uh, testing data set now. We're going to predict this on our testing Okay? And now we can check our matrix. This is our predict. Now we want this as closely as possible to resemble um, our white. So as you can see, there's some resemblance. I do the cost function. The accuracy. Oh yeah, we can do that. Do that. So yeah. we want to check our accuracy. So as you can see, it's looking pretty good so far, five, six, one. But to check exactly how many, we're going to loop through every data set and every element and see how many are equal. Huh? No, 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 loop. Just use the indicator function we did. No, y is equal equal to print. Wait, don't do the loop. <laughs> Why are you doing the loop? Uh, <laughs> if predict i is um why test i yeah why test i for that s yeah we have to put a counter on. and don't forget to put a counter in front. Oh, you need alloc. Oh, yeah, it's on the Yeah, you can't do that. I have dot pred dot alloc. Oh, and S. S. So, yeah. Huh? What do you. What's this thing? What do you need? No, we need to do. I don't think No, pred doesn't need alloc. Oh, it doesn't? S. S. Okay, there we Okay. But this is so. Okay. That took a long. Come out of our. Then. Then try it. And that's our accuracy, 96.6. 96.7. Which is pretty good. No, for MNICs. Okay, um, it's not good for Jackie. That's a lot. I shouldn't get it. No, but seriously, you can achieve like 99% with like CNA. But we just use random forest, so. Um, I'd go through another example of like. Oh, you should do the cost function for values in the folder. What? That's important. Wait, wait, do, wait, remember the cost function without them? Like, that's important. Uh, it's, it's because you want to trace it. Wait, oh, it's not fine. Like handwriting digits. Yeah, it's just sum and And just divide by the left. Give us like 99. No, it's important. Right? The, the indicator function, what we did, was just one line, right? The sum of the prediction is equal equal to the test divided by the length or the n, right? Instead of using the for if you don't want to use that. Like this one will take long if you have a lot of data. Um, but yeah, just use this. Well, use either. Nice. This one's more like um, logical programming. This one's... That's maths. That's yeah. maths. The other one is programming. <laughs> so if you're a computer scientist, this... Um, if you're lazy, it's not really lazy, that's math, okay? Fair enough. Anyways, to get high accuracy, you can increase the number of estimators or trees. I, I don't know if that actually will increase. It's not good, no, it's, it's increase it by like 0.5% maybe. But I don't want to do it, it'll take some Oh yeah, it's fine. I think... Oh wait, we're already over time. <laughs> Anyways, wait, yeah, do you guys want to quickly like, chuck a number to... No. No? Oh, wait, what? No, we have to go, I think. Yeah, it's no, four. No, what I was going to do is take one random element from here and then see if it predicts it correctly. Oh, you can do that if you want. Just data.sample1 or something, if you want. Data dot. Just do one. Yeah, you get a random element. No, just that. Yeah. And we're going to type it. We'll call that our no, 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 um, X. 
No, no, I mean, you forgot about the um, removing the label. Oh, yeah. No, just do it in I lock in front. Oh, okay. Oh, oh I do it. Uh, 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 and, and you won't get the same exact same yeah, 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 we got it correct. Uh, each thing starts off differently, so there's no right. redundancy.